So guys, it's just a horse here, and you can tell me how to do it, and do another review, usually I only do one a week, but I decided to do another one, because I saw this film, um, yesterday, uh, it's Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, I thought I'd complete all my Star Wars film reviews, and yeah, first off, this has been a weird thing to get, because I ordered it for Amazon pre-order, but because of global situations, it had to be, uh, it, I wasn't going to get it the day this came out, and I was expecting to get it the 25th. But then I got it the 23rd, because I believe today's the 24th, I think, so, um, and I think you're getting this video on the 24th, so, yeah, and, so I just thought I'd review it, just to let you guys know, there's a lot of reviews coming, I've got a planned review, for well, once every week until, like, August at the moment, and I'm not done yet, I'm planning to at least film three more, so, uh, I still want to let you guys know that this is not going to be, just a film reviews channel or anything like that. I'm still going to be doing the other stuff that I was doing, bef do I'm doing beforehand and stuff. I just really enjoy doing film reviews. So I just really enjoy it and I want to enjoy myself. So I just do, I've just done a lot of them. So I've just got a notification from YouTube. <laughs> okay. So yeah. And um, another thing, I'm also thinking about doing a series. I've done some very old ones on my channel this series. Don't watch them. <laughs> It will be a waste. It will be. It will be a few. It will be minutes of your life you'll never get take get back. But I'm thinking about doing this series. Like after I've reviewed, uh, reviewed all film TV show of the particular series, I would basically put them in. Do a video where I put the all the films in order from worst to best. Basically a ranking video. So. Yeah, so I'd be like, I start from the worst. My least favorite stars film would go up and up to the favorite. I'm planning to do that on stars first, but I'm gonna put a poll on Instagram. Say if you want, if you wanna be a part of that and what I do on the channel, make sure to um, uh, go and follow me on Instagram, jhorsg 2 Thank you very much. But now let's get to the film with you. But can I just say, the sequel trilogy as a whole, I don't know why it gets the hate it gets. It, it is. A, it's probably my favourite Star Wars trilogy, and a lot of Star Wars fans have probably already um, disliked the video, and does all that mean stuff if they're watching this, but I honestly love this film, in my opinion, it's, I, when I first watched it, I, I left the cinema thinking, this is my favourite Star Wars film, and the thing is, I didn't want to, I was a bit uncertain going because I was like, is it just because of this cinematic experience? So I just didn't want to do a review yet without knowing if that's how things actually change when I watch it again. So I watched the film again when I got the DVD. It still holds up as a brilliant film, in my opinion. I just love this film. My f and, yeah, it's a brilliant, entertaining film. I'm not going to tell you if it still is my favourite Star Wars film, because I might be doing that in my rank my video ranking video so um yeah uh i just um love this. so let's get to the few negatives i really have out of the way i can talk about how great this movie rose tico uh she's basically nothing in this film and she was quite important in the last film i know that's kind of because for no reason uh star wars fans got mad she was treated horribly online basically bullying because star wars fans can't tell the difference between real life and a film I know why, and they they'll be at, they'll be so mad that the, they'll bully you. He will take it out. Well, even say if you're in this situation, of course you'll take a role to me in Star Wars. Like of course you would. It's a big deal. The same thing happened with Jaila, which although I hate this, he's my least favorite Star Wars character. Bully he got, the actor got was wrong. But yeah, and another big thing I have is like Finn. Um, he's very unimportant in this film. I realised that when I first watched it, but he's very unimportant. Um, they have gone through the way, this is kind of minor, but it's not important to the plot, but they make it obvious in the film that he's force sensitive. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of happy with that, because it shows they've not given up completely on this character still doing something, but there was a clear story arc for him to be this kind of person who... Because he was a fool in Stormtrooper, as we know. He decided I wasn't against that. But he, I thought it would be him. He would be the his perfect story arc. If you were, if you were going to have him live at the end of Episode 8. Was to have him um, encourage other Stormtroopers to betray the First Order. And join him in the fight. And that's going to be his main point of the character. I, that would have been really cool to see. But they didn't do that. So... 
Yeah, in my opinion, I think he should have died in episode 8. Because they made you think that he was going to die, but then he didn't. So, I feel like that would have been a good hero's end to the cow. Because it would have made episode 8 a bit memorable. Like, don't get me wrong, episode 8 is one of my favourite Star Wars films. I love it. But it has very little kind of big moments. It's mainly focused on the story, but the it's it's got key focuses on having a full in-depth story but the characters don't end up having some huge grandiose moments it was still it's still a great film in my opinion but yeah so i uh, but apart and there's also this problem with the idea of them f- faking deaths so many times there's a lot of fake deaths there's there's only like, like one or two that are real and the rest are kind of fake deaths but yeah cast brilliant uh, Adam Driver is still the best, probably my favourite character. He's definitely my favourite character of Secret Trinity, maybe my favourite character in all of Star Wars, you know, history. Rey is really good as well, she's definitely up there. She was my second favourite character in this film. And I love the fact, and this is something I liked about the entire trilogy, and people go, me. they don't make her overpowered. I hear that complaint and I'm just like, what are you talking about? The only reason why she'd be... Kylo Ren in episode 7, it's because Chewbacca shot Kylo Ren, he was bleeding, he was like bleeding for a, a good amount of blood throughout their fight, putting Kylo Ren at a disadvantage, and Ray still had a nightmare uh, already to be an origin, already injured person. And in episode 8, when they were fighting the guards, she had trouble, um, t- she had, she was struggling to take down one guard, while Kylo Ren was facing free no problem. And even in this film, she's had a years of training. I liked that they just skipped the training personally. Uh, we've seen that already in, in the original trilogy with Luke and Yoda. There was no need to show you the tra- her training. And it's they've just skipped it. Because we don't need to see it. We've already seen it. It's we, uh, They just went to kind of the point like she's been trained. Even But even in this film, after years of training... She's not as powerful as Kylo Ren. She's the main character, but she's not as strong as Kylo Ren. She's strong, she's not as strong. So, um, yeah, so basically the story, the plot of this movie is, for some reason, and the novel goes more in depth with this, the Emperor Palpatine's returned, and he's built this army in the plan of Exegol. They need to stop Palpatine, but the only way you can find Exegol, because it's, not on any like map based chart, no one knows where it is, is to find these Sith Wayfinders, which is basically a model for Civil Pyramid with some like design and stuff. It will basically lead you to Exocol, and they've been looking for that. In terms of why is Palpatine alive, I'd recommend, I'm not going to bother getting here, but I have the Star Wars episode, episode 9 novelization. It is really good. It goes in probably the best book I've read. I don't really read, so yeah, it, probably, it goes in depth for like how. Palpatine's in this film, like, it, what, what, it goes in depth with stuff, just a two out, two, uh, it goes more in depth and stuff, because a 135 minute film cannot, um, go in depth enough to make everything make sense. I really like the fact that this is fast paced, it feels more fast paced at the cinema, but this would still be really good. Cons- here's the thing, Leia, uh, of course, episode, of course, Leia's the actor Kay Fisher unfortunately died after episode seven came out, but she had already filmed episode eight, uh, so they kept her scenes in it because I I was happy with that. But I didn't know that at first, but I was happy with that because it would kind of feel like she worked hard for those scenes, so I think they should have they should still keep them in, so they did. And in this scene, they basically use. Deleted scenes from The Force Awakens in episode 8 and kind of reconstructed it to make sense for the plot. She's not in this movie at all, but I felt like they treated her very well, gave her the goodbye she deserves, in my opinion. And I thought that was really um, good. In this film, we find out who Ray's related to, um, his, her family, let's say. Uh, in episode 7, it's, it's, it's this big deal, like she's going to be related to like Luke Skywalker or something. In episode 8, we would find out her parents are nothing. They were nothing. They're, yeah. In episode 9, they're still nothing, but they have a reason for it. And they were doing it to protect her. It's confusing. I don't want to get too spoilerish. But yeah, this was... um. 
yeah, I could think I've done some minor spoilers, but nothing anything big. But yeah, I love I love this film. Just gotta say, the final battle's great. Uh, see, just there was so many cool goosebump epic moments in this film. The final battle was kind of brilliant, to my opinion. It made sense. For kind of for Palpatine to be defeated that way, considering the character, and when I, I was remembering when I was going to watch it, I decided to watch all the Star Wars films leading up to it, and it was always Palpatine as the main villain. And in my opinion, you in Star Wars, you just can't get for the main story at least, you can't get a bigger like a better villain than Palpatine. I, I, and plus, I really liked how they made put him into this film and made it. And made me believe that he was always pulling the strings. And it wasn't something they decided to push in. Um, so I really like that they made me actually believe that he's been in control this entire time. And I um, just straight up love I love uh, that. Yes, I would have preferred if at the end of episode 8 we have the message that kind of kicks off this. And like we hear Patty's voice. Red. Uh, sorry, I've got a um, notification, but yeah, if we see her voice, ba- if we see his voice gets a message of his voice gets spread across the entire galaxy, and you end with that cliffhanger, so in a year's time it could be like, is he dead? Is he not? And they're trying to find out, and they find the intent to realize he is alive for somehow. So, although yeah, I love this film, I would give it a nine point five out of ten. It's a near perfect movie. Apart from those few flaws that I've done at the beginning, it's a perfect film. Lando's in this film, which I forgot to mention. He was great. Bo Dameron's in this film. He's pretty good. Uh, Chewbacca's in this film. Everyone's just really good. The cast is great, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'll give this a 9.5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Turn notifications on so you never miss a video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.